Welcome to the Foolish Kitchen. I know it's been a couple of weeks. Um, weather changed, got a new job, needs gas money. I've been doing a lot of car camping, day tripping, and I've been planning this video for a while and I really have to get it done because I have to get this thing out of the kitchen. This is one of my Steel Belt Coleman coolers. This one I bought new in 1984. Yes, that is 34 years ago. And I still have it. <laughs> Um, but as with this model, you have to, there's some give and take, um, it, for an inexpensive cooler and I mean, and the, I think now they're in the $150 range for the 54 quart, I'm not sure. Um, it, the steel belted works better than any of the plastic blow, the blow molded plastics, period. That's why I nurse the, the old ones that I have. But this one, the other thing, the drawback, which I never could figure out, is this plastic bottle. Uh, the plas this plastic, um, I don't want to call it oxidizing. I don't know, it ages, it gets crinkly. I'm not sure if this still fits. Yes, it does. Uh, it still has some rust spots to um, tackle on this. Okay, that's locked. Uh, I do have some rust spots to tackle on it. Every couple of years, I, uh, I don't mind the rust, but I... I'll make a stab at it, but the plastic cracks. Um, just from usage, I, I don't know, maybe the new plastic is different, but um, old ones that have been used, they'll get the rust, they still work, but the plastic, I mean, you can always repaint the metal, touch it up. I'm not going to do that because I don't really care and I would lose all my stickers. Um, and just in case you're wondering, you can't buy old um, transfers, uh, they're not stickers, uh, decals, transfer decals. They get too brittle and you can't use them. Because I tried replacing a couple of these. Anyway, so I'm going to fix a couple of these. And what I mean by fix is I stabilize them so that they don't continue to break. Um, I don't I'm no, not really sure what's inside. I'm assuming it's, uh, there's some plastic, but I always see rust peeking out. But I have done it before on this particular one. The other ones I take much better care of. But actually, uh, I think this one was in storage for a long time, and that's why I got beat up. But I used this all through college, and uh, I still use it on occasion because it's the smaller of the ones that I own. And it's the one I don't care if I bang up, because it's already banged up. But I've done it before. Um, any of the voids in the plastic, oh God, I hope you can see this, that's better. Any of the voids in the plastic, I fill with stuff. Um, I believe this is the urethane foam that you use for insulation. And somewhere I have, and then when that's, when it's dry, I trim down any of the visible pieces and then I smear on the uh, silicone bath, um, uh, bath caulk. I smear that on. I mean, it always comes out looking a little ratty with fingerprints and everything. Um, so I try to make it smooth. But what it does is it stabilizes it so it doesn't continue to crack and you won't lose very large pieces. So this is one I did at least five years ago. Um, maybe, I'm not sure, I was at the other house. So, I did a little work on this corner, but this is a new crack. So I'm gonna take a stab at that one. And this one I only smeared some silicon. I didn't fill any of the voids and hence it's still cracked. So, thanks for joining me and we'll see if we can get something done here. Sorry for the cut. Um, Things went sideways, uh, ran out of the great stuff, the urethane foam, had to get another one, has different t attachment to it, and then I spent like a day trying to find my strap clamp, and so I made one. So uh, I, I'm going to do it again for the video, I might cut it, um, but anyways, I injected urethane foam, and then I put on a... I smeared it in as best I could inside. It doesn't matter what it extrudes because you can get that off. We're gonna, I'm going to show you that too. Uh, but then I uh, 
did. I wrapped it up, put in a clamp. I used a rope clamp. We're going to do that again. And uh, let it, I left it like a day because basically um, I didn't want to have to dig everything out again. So um, it's, it's like molasses candy. So basically you just um, shave off anything that's not you know, that's protruding, that's just like you do at home when you fill it in a gap. Um, just take a knife, cut everything you don't like. Uh, don't dig at it because you don't, you want it to be more rounded. And then I'm going to smooth it out. If there's still some creases and crevices, the I'm going to smear some quick seal on it because uh, it is much um, more waterproof, I think, than the urethane foam. Urethane foam, it does have that, the, um, spongy consistency, whereas this will be a smooth silicone layer. So, uh, let's finish this and move on to another one. I can't read that about how long that takes to dry, so I'm not going to touch it for a day anyway. So, and it's all textured. Ta da! Yeah, this is not fresh stuff, so I don't. back again. You know, it's easy to do kitcheny things because I can bring out all the kitcheny things, but once I expand beyond that, it's like I'm keep going to my toolboxes and bringing stuff out. I know I don't pre prearrange things, but I just spent like another half hour looking for my quilting iron and I have no idea where that is. So note to self, dig out everything because my thought is since this is curled up, I should be able to heat it and curl it down. I'm not going to hurt the nail at all, but I don't want to hurt the iron. Um, it's a parchment, not wax paper. Wax paper will release onto the iron, and we don't want that. So I've got it on like medium, and it's not like we're going to burn it or anything. So I think I just oh, that's nice. 